Hey, everybody. So this is the... What, key... what is today? Second. It's Groundhog Day. It's Groundhog Day. Ponte Carli, Phil, whatever it is, said that it was six more weeks of, uh, of, of winter. So I think it's six puppies. Yes. He flied me by that. Yeah. She looks like she may have yeah. swallowed Ponsacani Bill. Yes. So she's, uh, she's looking. She's... I'm going to go back this way. Okay. You don't like it up there on the no, table. No. Like okay. So why are we doing this video? Because this is our pre-C-section time. Our first due date was actually yesterday. But look, the, such an important thing here is, is that you don't take puppies early. If you do, you can have terrible results. So. How are we gonna do this? Well, we've been watching her, she's still eating. We're about to take a temperature and I suspect the temperature will still be elevated. The temperature below 99 is indicative of puppies within uh, uh, 24 hours. So what, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a temperature. So what do we do? We grease Kit. up a thermometer, stick it in there and let it sit. Sorry, Kit's being um, a big whiny baby. Okay, then after that we're gonna do, we're gonna draw some blood, we're gonna spin it down and we're gonna do a reverse progesterone test because that is, here's the signs you're looking for. A dog who's at around her first due date, a dog whose temperature has dropped down below 99 to 98.9, .9, and a, a dog that uh, is not eating food, a dog that is nesting and panting, all of those things. Um, so here we go, here's our temperature now. So we're at 99. Nope, not today. 99.8. <laughs> so, so the problem with this is, is that sometimes I see dogs that don't show the temperature drop. I suspect she will. Uh, she's well, just not ready yet. tomorrow is her last breeding due date. Yes. But that doesn't mean she'll be ready. Nope, it doesn't. No, she could go a couple We're days past that. We're going to do the progesterone test to be able to tell that. So, so this is why we are now going to draw some blood. Turn her around so oh, you can see what's going on. Oh, goodness sake. Poor You're torn, okay. Now, can you do this? Well, only if you've got a progesterone machine, which if you're going to get serious about this, I highly recommend that you go get a progesterone machine. We sell those, by the way. Fine care product. Really wonderful. Yes. But if you don't, you can go get your vet to do it. Either one's fine. All right. Can you open that up for me? I'm going to put that on her nose. Her nose is a little She's dry. a little there. runny nose. Yes. you got dry. too much on there. I know. <laughs> Here, pop it on that. There we go. All right. Her nose is dry. She needs some anyway. Yeah. Okay. So, we need... I like to use a one mil syringe. If you use a bigger syringe, you'll find it's much harder to pull the blood. Then I got a 22 gauge, one inch needle. 22 gauge is perfect. It's you can go eat. a 30 gauge, very, very small for diabetics. You will not be able to pull the blood from that. And then I made a fashion of tourniquet up out of a elastic band. Can you look at this here, Tammy? So the nice thing about this is, is one pull and it's removed. So it's, all this is is two elastic bands with a knot in the middle. It's so easy to do. So I'm glad you got the needle covered up. Yes. Okay, so now, Kiki, what's it if you do? shave this area, you will definitely have a better time seeing what you try to do. Um, I've done this enough oh, don't that, uh, say that too much. hopefully <laughs> I'll pull it without having to do anything. So I pull this back a little bit to just produce any kind of a stick, sticking thing. There's the vein right there. Then it's bevel up, slow push in, watch for the flash. There's the flash, pull the blood back. Yeah. Pretty girl. And I just, she moves yes. a little bit. I blame her for this. Mama, be still. Let it catch be up. Still. Be still. I've got enough blood to do it now. Here it comes. Just take your time with this. I've got about 0.6 for CC, which is plenty for the test. I'm just going to let it run a little bit wide. Had a beautiful stab, and then I moved it a little bit. It's much easier if you've got somebody to hold the dog while they're doing this, but that's fine. So now one hand pull, that comes off, that comes out. Just put elastic on that, and there we go. And uh, that stopped bleeding already. There it is. Good girl. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go spin this blood down. That's okay. going to be another video. We'll show you that, and we'll see okay. what the numbers are. So here we go. But look, this is such an important thing. I mean, I can tell you that we I run into situations literally every week where somebody's taking their puppies early, and uh, you're not pointing at me, Tammy. Oh, sorry. Taking it early, and it's really not good results when that happens. So it's very, very important that you really do get this right. And look, I keep on about this, and I keep on about this because people make mistakes, but here's the deal. When you go to your vet and you have a, um, an AI done, and then they schedule a C-section date simply off the AI, that is an absolute recipe for disaster. That's where you really can get in trouble. When the vet says, oh, I won't be around on Saturday, let's do this Friday, that's another recipe for disaster. And look, 
you know, plan A, plan B. Have at least two vets on hand if you can. that you know but, is gonna be around. But the important thing here is just to remember that you're the boss. And so, you know, we get into this habit where we assume that doctors know everything. We just take what they say as being sacrosanct. The, the fact of the matter is, is that vets do know an awful lot about lots of different things to do with dogs. They're experts on that. And don't get me wrong, we absolutely believe in our vets, but Lots of vets are not fully in tune with things about C-sections on French Bulldogs. And so that's where the, the problem comes. And, I, and you have to ask questions and make sure you get this right. Because if you don't, if you don't, you can absolutely take puppies early and that is a very bad day. Hopefully we will not have a bad day when this happens for our girl. All right, next video tacked on the end of this is gonna be the continuation. We pull blood, we spun it down um, like that for about five minutes. And by the way, this is the machine. We, we sell um, centrifuges. I like this centrifuge because it's variable speed. So you can use this not just for spinning blood down, but for instance, separating semen from prostate fluid, those kind of things. Okay, so we'll go fish out our sample that we pulled. There it is. So you can see a nice separation of the red blood cells from the, uh, the plasma serum, actually. I think you call that. All right. So, well, let's, before we do this, here is the fine care machine. We sell these too, we're an authorized dealer. Love this machine. Um, superb product, comes with uh, support directly from me and support from Chicago. Uh, uh, it's, you don't go to China, you go to me and I buy the machines from fine care, one foe in Chicago. If you have a problem with the machine, I take care of it. They've got an exchange program. Again, nothing has to go all the way to China and come back. All right. So when you buy the machine, you also would buy a box of 10 test kits. In the test kits, it comes with a calibration chip. Every time you open up a new box, you put the calibration chip in and you press read ID chip. And it's that quick. And that is now calibrated to this new chemistry. And we can put this away. We won't use this again, unless we um, come up with a new box of tests. So here's the test box, comes with 10 tests. It comes with instructions. It comes there, you'll use an auto pipette. It comes with these little nozzles with every, every box of 10 test kits. So we'll put a nozzle on here. Well, now we're gonna pull up 75 microliters, which is what this is, 75 okay, microliters. you're gonna have to slow down. 75 microliters. Yeah. So it's a two position uh, device, one, two. We go on the first notch, we put it in the sample, we pull it up. And there is exactly 75 microliters. We're done with this. Now, Every kit comes with 10 little buffer tubes. And we open this up. Getting close, Tammy? Okay. It's got a little bit of fluid in there. You gotta... Yeah. Can you not see me all right? Yeah. Okay. We put this in here and we dump that in there. Now we want to swirl it around. Now you can either buy a vortex spinner. What I do is I just really start mixing it up. But they say that you've really got to mix this up well. Kind so like I do. Kind pump in action in the. Yes, exactly. So I really mix it up well. And that's what little tube is that that you're pumping there, Every with? comes with 10 tests and 10 little buffer, buffer yeah, tubes. Yeah, but the thing that you're actually making Auto it Auto pipette. That's the auto pipette. Okay. It's mixed up well. All right, so here comes the test. So the test, each test comes with a sealed pouch. We open that up, pull that out. Take a picture of that, Tammy. And you can see here, there's a little window. And we're going to deposit into this little window here. Okay. So show this again. So first notch down to the bottom, lift it up. And there is my nice measure. That now goes into the window. There it is. Immediately, don't hang around, don't take five minutes and put this into the machine. Like that, hit start test. That's it's it. simple. So it'll start counting down, 15 minutes. And here it is, count, count down 15 mi minutes. And at 15 minutes, it will then spit this thing out. It will show us the results and it'll print it out for us and it'll record it inside the machine. So now we're gonna fade out. We're gonna come back to the, uh, what the results are. Okay, okay, continuation. So we put the, the uh, cassette into the machine. We drew some blood, we got the right amount out, we put it with the buffer solution, we stuck it in the cassette, we stuck the cassette in the machine. Now we're about 50 minutes later. Tammy, just take a look at this if you would. So here comes the test results. We're nine counting down. 
and we'll see the number come up here and it'll print it out. And I suspect that she's gonna be like a five or a six or something. I don't think this dog's ready to have a C-section. Here it goes. Here's the test running. You like magic. And there's it, 14.51, there you go. And then it prints it out here as well, 14.51. So that is a dog that's still got a few days to go. How many days has it got to go to 14.51? Well, her Wait. last breeding due date, her- Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. But the important point here is, the drop in progesterone level is unpredictable. You cannot tell how many days that number is. All you can say is, that dog is absolutely not ready for a C-section. And I can tell you this, that dog is one day past its due date, and a lot of first vets, due date. Yeah, it's first due date, and a lot of vets would, would just go ahead and do a C-section, be a bad day, be a bad day. Oh yeah. So this is not a bad day today. Hopefully tomorrow or the next day is a good day. I'm gonna predict that she's gonna be ready for a C-section probably Thursday. So now tell people why it would be a bad day. So the, the answer that, yeah, good, good, yeah. The, so the, the reason it'd be a bad day is if you take puppies early, they have this leather looking slick face uh, they still look like they're developed properly, but they have this, what we call a slick face. Slick face puppies, their lungs have not got the surfactant necessary to do the transition between reading, uh, breathing, uh, being in the mum's tummy in amniotic fluid, with their lungs full of amniotic fluid, to being outside and breathing air. They don't do the transition properly. And what you'll find is those puppies will appear to be fine, but then they will start dying off over typically the next 24 to 72 hours, you start losing puppies. And you can lose an entire litter over this, and it's just a horrible yeah, day. three days early, you can do it too. Yeah, yeah, if you're, more than, if you're more than two days early from when she would have gone into a natural uh, um, uh, labor, you've messed up. So you've really got to be careful on this. I can't stress this enough. I promise you, some of you who are watching this will get bad advice from your vets. Here's the thing that I, spit, sorry about that. Here's the thing, here's the thing. This is the conversation that I like the least. I, I sent some semen off to a customer. They did the AI, it all went well. And then they'll say, yep, we scheduled a C-section date four. And they've got a date already predicted for you know 61 days out or whatever from when we did the, the AI. That is a recipe for disaster because you just can't predict it that well. You've got to go off the temperature, the way the dog's behaving, the progesterone levels, or let the dog start beginning stages of labor. If you don't do those things, then I mean, you really have the possibility of uh, having a bad day. And uh, some of you will make that mistake uh, and, and your vets will lead you into that mistake too. So remember, I'm not bashing vets here. Vets are wonderful. We, we have wonderful vets out here. We rely on them, but, I, but I'm telling you that you've just gotta make sure you're asking the right questions to make sure you get this date right. You, you gotta you know your girls and have them right there with you when yep. they're pregnant. Yes, okay. So thanks for watching. Next video is gonna hopefully be us going for a C-section with Kiki. Yeah, and then you can call 799 or 580-799-1910 and ask about these little fluffy carrier puppy dogs. And some of them will be carrying the new testable chocolate or new shake. That's right, library. Bye.